The vast majority of people who are autistic get diagnosed when they were a kid. The average age for a diagnosis is four years old. Well, I'm 54 and I just got mine. And it's a lot. So in this video, I'll talk about how I feel about being autistic, the ups, the downs, and the road ahead. Now, I'm no expert. This is just the first step in my journey. So I'll be talking about how I feel and sharing what I've learned so far. But there are plenty of people more knowledgeable than me, and I've listed a few in the description under the video. And if you have experience with this, please do leave your suggestions and resources in the comments. Okay, so. I've always felt different, not in the I'm a special shining talent kind of way, but more in the there's some things that everyone else seems to understand that confuse me and other things that I understand really, really, really deeply that nobody else seems to care about and also I'd really rather always be in a quiet dark room kind of way. Over the last few years I started reading about autism and the more I read, the more some of the things I was reading seemed to apply pretty strongly to me. It's really odd and really not fun reading a list of key aspects of what you thought were parts of your unique personality listed as traits of a disability. It's fucking horrible actually. It's like a big part of your soul has been relabeled as something medical rather than something deeply personal. Or at least, that's what it felt like before I started learning a little more about autism, about what it is, about what I am. At first, whenever the word disability was used, I flinched. Perhaps I just didn't want that label, but also I didn't feel like it quite fit. But, as Dr. Devon Price says in his book Unmasking Autism, we are disabled robbed of empowerment and agency in a world that is not built for us. It's true of all disabilities, of course, that one of the central reasons why, and I'm going to use an academic term here, why it sucks to be disabled, is because most people aren't, and the world is made by and for most people. A significant percentage of the pain of any disability, of any difference, is navigating the social exclusion of a world made for the majority when you're not in that group. Autism isn't a disease or an illness, it's a neurotype, a biological variation. An autistic person's brain, my brain, literally works slightly differently to the majority of brains. It's a hardware issue, a limited edition variant, super collectible. Which means that living in a world made for people whose brains work differently to mine can be challenging, confusing, stressful, and sometimes completely overwhelming. Now imagine someone like me living in that world, but unaware they have autism. Imagine how exhausting and scary it might be day to day, feeling like the outside world and the people in it are, every so often, in quite subtle ways, rejecting you. Well, welcome to the first 54 years of my life. When I got diagnosed, it was a relief. A bunch of things about myself that I felt confused about, or shame about, or embarrassment, or regret, or things in my past that hurt me much more than they should have, things I dwell on, it felt like a lot of that stuff was explained. That this might be why I did that. How many friends did I lose or never get because my uncommunicative, distracted manner made me seem disinterested in them, when really I was working hard in my head to do my best impression of what was expected, but just sometimes not getting it quite right? But also perhaps the hyper-focus that autism often brings to what get called special interests meant that once I'd found things to be passionate about, I got really good at them including some of the things that pay my mortgage. The diagnosis felt like it gave me permission to start to accept myself a little bit more completely than I had before. I mentioned that it felt odd hearing all these things that I thought contributed to my uniqueness being listed as traits of autism, but I think all it takes is a little reframing. Those things are autism, but they are also me. They are no less me just because my brain is different. 
Coming to terms with my diagnosis feels like a bigger deal than I thought it would. I've heard autism called our superpower more than once lately, and I get what that means. There are pros as well as cons to all of this. And certainly for someone like me, a creative, a maker, a solo act, my neurodivergence might well add arrows to my quiver. I'm just not quite at the place where I can lean into that yet. Right now I just feel a bit sorry for myself. I feel a strange kind of grief for my childhood and teenage self. If I was a kid now, perhaps it would have been picked up and I would have been helped, but I was a kid in the 70s and nobody was really looking for it, so this quiet, stuttering little boy was left to his own devices, and because of that I had an often painful, solitary time and I just didn't know why. There's little I can do about the past except look back on it with the new knowledge of what I was struggling with and give myself a little retrospective understanding. But the future is something I can change. So, going forward, I'm going to work hard on masking less. Masking is a coping strategy that autistic people do, consciously and unconsciously, to try and fit in. It's about suppressing autistic behaviour patterns and trying to basically pretend to be neurotypical. Fun fact, if you've ever had a conversation with me where we maintained eye contact, there's a fair chance I was actually looking at the bridge of your nose while having a conversation with myself in my head about whether I was doing it right. Because eye contact is, for some reason, incredibly difficult. Masking is about rehearsing how to behave normally so you don't appear too odd, about planning basic social interactions, about suppressing the little weirdsies that bring you comfort, and it's fucking exhausting. So I'm going to try and do less of that. This will be hard, it will make me feel vulnerable, but that's okay. I'm a big brave boy. I'm not. I'm not going to apologise for doing things that protect me. That should be easier now that I know why I'm doing them, but before, if I felt the need to leave a situation, I just thought I was being antisocial or rude, but now I can put a name to those reasons, and hopefully both me and other people will understand them a bit better. And that's the other thing. I'm going to tell people. Partly so they understand me, which is good for, you know, friendship and stuff, but Partly so it doesn't stay quite as hidden. It's not a secret, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm still really early on in all of this, and I'm sure my feelings will evolve and change, but I wanted to start documenting this from the start so we can see how it all pans out. The more knowledge I gain about my neurodivergence, the more I feel like less of an outsider and more like part of a community. And that feels like a good start. Thanks for watching. As always, if you made it this far, please do subscribe to my channel, click like, leave a comment and give it a share. All of that stuff really helps small independent makers like me. Writing, shooting and editing these videos takes time and money, so I'd like to say a huge thank you to my backers over at Patreon who support me in doing that. If you'd like to join them, there's a link under the video. Thanks again for watching. Hope you're good. I'll see you next time.